Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be actually using some new products that I had picked up in the last few months. And yes, I did say the last few months because there are some products here that I have not used since February. They have just been sitting in a bag and I've been meaning to show these to you, but I haven't gotten to it. I don't know why I haven't, but at least I'm showing them to you now. So if you wanna see how I got this look, then just keep watching. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get started. I am going in with my Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I love this primer. I haven't purchased any new primers here recently. So this is the primer that I'm actually gonna use today. And I love this primer because it is a hydrating primer. And since I've been using some new skincare products, I need more hydration. This actually delivers that hydration that I need. So for primer in my T-zone, of course I'm going in with my Stellar Primer. This primer has been like my favorite because it literally blurs every fine line that I have right here and it also blurs my pores. So it works really well for that. All right, now I'm going to go in with my foundation and I'm using this sample that I got from Ulta and it is the Tarte Found Sealer Foundation. This is supposed to be like a more hydrating, more radiant foundation than the um, Tarte What's it called? Not the shape tape. I can't remember the name. It's called the Tarte Face Tape Foundation. I couldn't remember what it was called and I use it all the time. But anyway, um, so I'm gonna go in with the found sealer. I do have the shade Tan Neutral. Because it was a sample, they didn't have many shades to choose from. And I think this was like kind of the last darkest shade that they had. So I went ahead and took the Tan Neutral. I am gonna start with my foundation today as opposed to what I normally do. And there's no reason for it. I'm just gonna start with my foundation today. So, so let me go ahead and put this on my skin. But before before I do that, I need to wet this beauty blender. I am so not prepared today for some reason. I feel like I'm going 100 miles an hour, so forgive me for that. I'm gonna go wet the beauty blender, and then I'm gonna come back, hopefully, like a little more calm, and then we can get started with applying this makeup. Okay, I wet my sponge, and I took a deep breath, so now I feel like a little more calm, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna pump this on the back of my hand and show you guys what the consistency is. It's not runny at all. It does feel like a little creamy. It's not a very thick foundation. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this Wet n Wild Beauty Sponge only because it feels really creamy and I think it'll blend really well with this sponge instead of using a brush. So let me go ahead and apply that. The neutral shade looks like it matches my neck pretty well. And I'm not sure what kind of coverage this is supposed to give. I'm gonna look it up right here on my computer in a minute so I can give you guys a little bit more detail about the foundation. But it seems like it's just like a very light to medium coverage. It doesn't look like it's full coverage at all with this first application. So because I like a little bit more coverage, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with another application of the foundation. Put about that much on the back of my hand. So far, it being a light to medium coverage, it is really pretty on the skin, but it's not giving me that coverage that I like. I'm only gonna go in with another pump. Hopefully I'll get a little bit more coverage with this third application. Right now when I put the second one on, it doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't feel like cakey or anything like that as I'm putting on the applications. But I'm gonna go ahead and try put a little bit more, just on those areas where I feel like I need more coverage. And I really don't feel like the Wet n Wild sponge is absorbing any of the product. I feel like it's distributing the product pretty well. It is really pretty on the skin. It has like this beautiful radiant glow and yeah, it looks really nice. So of course I'm gonna have to go in with like my Shape Tape Concealer that I always use to add that additional coverage. I did not bring it down here, so I'm gonna have to go back upstairs and get it, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I went up and got my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. I'm gonna let you guys know a little bit about the foundation. It says here that it helps hydrate and give the appearance of plumper skin while minimizing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. It protects skin with an SPF 20. It's formulated with Nourishing Super Balm Babasu. Babasu? I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. It also has essential fatty acids and antioxidants 
for light coverage, it says to apply with the fingertips. And then for light to medium coverage, it says to use the Basu Found Sealer Latex Free Sponge. So it is a light to medium coverage foundation. It says it's vegan, hypoallergenic, hydrating. It has 12 hour power. It's non-comedogenic. And of course it has that broad spectrum of SPF 20. So the SPF 20 is a plus for this foundation. Even though SPF 20 is not enough, I think you need more of an SPF like 30 or SPF 40 to actually fight against the sun's rays. But even so, the SPF 20 is a plus to the foundation because it provides just a little bit of protection for your skin. Either way, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on. I think it is a beautiful, natural looking foundation. Um, if my skin was like perfect and it was clear and I didn't have those imperfections, I think I would love this foundation just based on my first impression of it because it is a pretty foundation. So let me go ahead and add my coverage from my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, and this is in the shade Tan, and I'm going to add that just in those areas where I normally add it for coverage. The ingredient that's in this foundation is called the Basu. That ingredient nourishes, moisturizes, and soothes the skin. So that's probably a really good ingredient to have if you have really dry skin. And I'm not gonna put my concealer on just yet, but I am going to put on my under eye primer, and I'm using the Smashbox Photo Finish Hydrating Under Eye Primer. This is a primer that I've been using for a while. I just love it for that primer effect and also for hydrating my under eyes. So for eyes today, I'm gonna to go in with this Venus Excess palette. I've had this palette, guys, for like the longest. I actually purchased it probably around February of this year and I have not used it. But this is what it looks like. It's just a beautiful, like, cool toned palette. I'm only gonna use these two shades in here because I'm going to go in with something else on my lid. I wanna use these colors more of like a transition color and also like a color to like deepen out the outer corner of my eye to prepare for the shadow that I'm gonna put on my lid. So before I do that, I need to go in with my eye primer and I'm using the NYX Proof It Waterproof Eye Primer. This stuff really works. Your eyeshadow will not go anywhere, especially if it's hot outside. I wore this on my trip to the beach and it was really hot when we arrived and my eyeshadow didn't go anywhere because I used this primer. So it really, really does work. I'm gonna use my Sonia G Blender Pro. I'm gonna go into the lightest shade right here. I'm gonna put that in the crease. Wow, that's a very pigmented shadow. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's pretty pigmented. It's really pretty too. So I'm bringing that a little bit above the crease. So I'm gonna go into this shade here. It's kind of like a purple gray. It's not like really gray, but it's kind of like has a little purple tone to it. I'm gonna go in with the Sonia G Crease Pro. That one's nicely pigmented as well and it's blending really nicely with the other shade. I can't believe I've had this um, palette for that long that I had it. I really wanted to use it because it's so pretty. It's got some beautiful shades in it. It's only like four shades, but it's got really pretty shades in there. So there are two other shades in here in the palette that are more like shimmer shades. I'll swatch both of them so you guys can see but it's these two shades right here that I'm not gonna use those shades today because I wanna go in with a more like purple tone shadow. And I'm gonna go in with this ColourPop Super Shock Shadow and it's in the shade Ripple. I actually did a video showing you the Super Shock Shadows that I purchased and then also trying them on the lid while showing you guys swatches. So yeah, I'll link that video here if you haven't seen it. And I'm gonna use that with my finger. I'm gonna go in and show you the shade right here. It's really pretty. I'm just gonna pat that on my lid. Oh my gosh, I love this shade. And putting it on with your finger does it so much more justice than you putting it on with the brush. Now you can amp this eye look up with an eye glitter and this is the one I'm gonna use today. It's by Milani in the shade Cosmic Meadow. It's a beautiful purple sparkly shade and I'm gonna use this just as a topper on my lid. I actually didn't bring down a, a glitter primer but I'm gonna go ahead and just place this on my lid anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and place this on 
the center of my lid. I'm not even gonna go all over the lid. And it just kind of amps up that shadow. Now with this, I try to keep my eyes a little low and I'm gonna fan it with this because you don't want to open your eyes too soon before it dries because it will crease up. Either fan it or let it dry. I really like these Milani Hypnotic Light Sparkle Shadows. I actually purchased two more. This is a newer one. This is the Cosmic Meadow, and this is one of the new ones that they just recently came out with. And then they also came out with these two here as well. This one is Electric Forest, and this one is Desert Heat. So the Desert Heat has more like of a gold tone to it. And of course with this one, it's more of like a sea green tone, but it's really pretty. I swatched both of them and they're both really beautiful. So yeah, I'm glad I picked those up. Those are gonna be like perfect just to add that sparkle for summer. I'm gonna go ahead and do my concealer. And if you guys have been with my channel for a while, you guys know that I really like the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser Concealer. I have used this for I don't know how long. It's actually one of my favorite drugstore concealers because it has that perfect coverage and it blends in smoothly. This one is in the shade medium, but I did purchase two others and I purchased the Brightening Illuminator one. It's more of like a pink undertone. And then I also purchased the Sand Sable one. I don't think I've ever purchased the Sand Sable. I might have, I don't know but I can't remember if I have. But I purchased this one because it's a little bit lighter than the medium and I like that highlighting effect under my eyes. And I also purchased the Brightening Illuminator because initially when I first started using this product, I used the Neutralizer and it's more of like a yellow undertone and this one's more of a pink undertone. So I wanna see if it cancels out my dark circles a little bit better than the Neutralizer. So I'm gonna go in with this Illuminator first, twist up like this. You just twist it till you get the product out. It takes forever. Finally. There we go. Focus. So there it is right there. And I'm going to swatch a little bit. You'll see the pink undertone. It looks white on camera, but really there's a pink undertone there. I'm going to dab this on my under eyes. Right there where I have those dark circles. I like the way it canceled out the darkness under my eyes. It looks really brightening. So now I'm going to go in with the Sand Sable. I kind of like that shade way better than the medium. See how pretty the coverage is with this concealer? And this is a drugstore concealer, guys. It's like one of the best. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with powder and I'm using the Ofra Banana Powder for my under eyes. I purchased this Beauty Blender Power Pocket Puff. I've never used one of these before. I actually wanted to use it on my last video and I forgot to use it. So today I'm going to use it. So it looks like this soft here and then this is more of like a spongy like material and then it's got a place for your fingers to go into so yeah let me see what this says so it says to use the plush side to put the powder on and for touch-ups use this side so we're not going to do any touch-ups today because i'm barely putting on the makeup so we're going to go in with the plush side i'm going to go into the powder well first let me see if i have any creases which i don't i don't have any creases okay so let's go into the powder with the plush side. So I just put on the powder there and then I'm gonna press it into the under eye. Ooh, did a pretty job. Oh my gosh, it looks so smooth. I like that. I should have started using this a lot sooner. This really made that powder go on so smooth. It looks really nice and it doesn't look cakey. It looks really like airbrushed. I'm gonna go in with this Huda Beauty Tantor Contour and Bronzer Cream. I picked this up while at Sephora. It was after the sale, so it wasn't during the sale. I picked it up like I think it had just come out. I went ahead and picked up the shade Light. I did test most of those contours on the back of my hand, and it just seemed like a lot of them were really dark. 
But this light one seemed like it was like more on the bronzy side. I like more of a like warm contour than a cool tone contour. So this was actually a good shade for me. But this is the packaging here. And then you actually twist it open. Comes like with a little protector. This is the shade here. And you guys can see that it's very warm and it looks dark for it being light. So I'm gonna use this one today. I'm gonna go in with this e.l.f. brush. It's like a little fan brush, but it's very thick very dense and I'm going to dip that into the contour cream and then I'm going to contour my face. So I'm just dabbing it into my cheeks and then kind of blending it in. Wow, that is blending super nice. Guys, that took like no effort, no effort at all. And it's so pretty. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. This is the perfect shade for me. I can already tell because it's not too dark. It's not too light. It's showing up really well on my skin. So I'm just gonna contour just those edges where I normally would. And then I'm gonna do my chin, get a little bit more chiseled look. Just run it right underneath the chin. And then I'll bring a little bit down because it is very warm, so I'll bring it a little bit down. But look how beautiful that contour is and it did not mess with the foundation. Super, super nice contour. It actually goes on way creamier than my Chanel. Um, I brought this one down because I wanted to kind of compare the two and see which one was gonna be a little bit more creamier because if this one wasn't as creamy, I would have recommended you guys getting this one even though I know this one can be a little bit pricey. It still has that really good warm bronzing effect, but this is just gorgeous and it's way creamier than my Chanel. I still love my Chanel, I'm not gonna give it up, but this is way more creamier and so beautiful on the skin. Okay, so to set my face, I'm not using anything new to set my face. I'm using a product that I've actually used before in the past and I recently pulled it out of my collection because I had a brand new one in a box and I thought, well, why not start using it again and just see if I really like it and I do. This is a beautiful, powder. It is by MAC. It is their mineralized skin finish and I have mine in the shade medium tan. This is the shade right here. Beautiful, beautiful powder to set your face. It gives a really soft finish and it just looks really nice on the skin. When I took it out of the box and started using it, it was right before I went on vacation and I ended up taking this one with me and I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and use just this Ulta powder brush. I'm going to dab it into the powder and then press it all over the skin. So before I go ahead and put my bronzer and my blush on, I'm gonna try this NYX Fill and Fluff Eyebrow Pomade Pencil. This actually caught my eye at Ulta. The liner is actually right here and it has like a little pad at the end. I haven't opened it so I don't really know exactly how it looks. So it's just a pencil like this. And I got mine in the shade Espresso. It might be a bit dark, but I tested it in the store and it seemed like it would work. What is this? This is like a, it's like a mini brush. It has all these little bristles in it. Do you see that? And then on this end, of course, it's a pencil that has like a triangular shape to it. Basically what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to Fill in your brows and then you're supposed to fluff it with this so it looks a little bit more natural. It says, the boyfriend gene of the eyebrow world has arrived. This all-in-one brow pencil features a smooth waxy pomade for shading and a tiny paddle brush for fluffing and, and blending together an effortless look. It's supposed to make your eyebrows look a lot more natural and I guess a lot more fluffed. So let's go ahead and try it. I'm gonna brush my eyebrows through before we start with that. I normally don't do my eyebrows on camera because I'm not really good at it, but I want to show you guys this product because I thought it was pretty cool. It's different. And I'm just gently filling in the brow. I'm not going in with a heavy hand. And now I'm gonna use the brush to fluff it.
it feels like it is brushing it really nicely. It's, it is grabbing on my hairs. It seems so easy to use. So that's one brow. Here's the other one. I actually like it. It looks really nice. If you guys can hear like um, noise in the background, my daughter's watching something on Netflix. Can you please put your earphones on? Sorry. That's okay. Okay, so this is how it looks, guys. I really like the way it looks. It made my brows look a lot fuller, and the color's perfect, and it was really easy to use. I like this little brush because it really tugs on each of the hairs. It's so far, so good. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other brow, and then I'll be right back, and we'll get on with the other products. I don't know why, but I had a little bit more difficulty with this brow than I did with this one, so I don't know why that is. It seemed a little bit more difficult, like I had less control, putting it on this brow. So anyway, let's go ahead and go into some more product. I have been using this Bare Minerals Warmth Bronzer. I have been loving this. It is so beautiful on the skin. I'm going to use this today um, to actually go over that contour. I'm just going to use this brush that I've been using with it. It's the Wet n Wild brush, kind of like a large dome brush. I'm just going to place that over the contour. I don't have a new blush, so I'm gonna go in with this Milani Rose Powder Blush. It's the 02 Floral Fantasy. It's a little trio. I'm gonna go into this middle blush here. It's a more neutral tone blush. I'm gonna use this BH Cosmetics. It's my Ray Ray brush. These are really nicely pigmented, so you don't wanna put too much on your brush at first. Before I put highlighter on, I'm gonna go in with this new product called the Deluxe Glow Highlighter from Catrice. This reminds me of the Hourglass, um, I can't remember the name of it, but I'll put it right here, but it's the Hourglass, it's a trio of their powders. This one actually reminded me of that. With the Hourglass palette, I usually will go and I'll take my brush and take all those shades and kind of mix them together and then I buff the skin with those. So that's how I'm gonna use this palette today. I'm gonna swatch the shades so you guys can see. Um, but they're very light and they have like a nice fine shimmer to them. Really pretty. I actually had purchased this before and it broke on me and then when I went back to the store to get a new one, there were like none left. So when I saw this in store, I went ahead and picked it up because I wanted to see if it had the same effect that the Hourglass powders did in that little trio. I'm going to use the Japanese Dome Brush and I'm just going to swirl my brush throughout the palette just like that and then I'm going to buff the skin. Ooh, it is giving a pretty glow. It just gives a really beautiful, nice, soft glow. And honestly, it's working just like my Hourglass did. I think this cost me like under $10. I know it wasn't more than that, but this is fantastic. Okay, so for the next thing I'm gonna go into is highlight. So I am gonna use a highlighter today and it's the Flextarian. It's also by ColourPop and it was also in that video that I talked about earlier. I'm gonna use the highlighting brush by e.l.f. and I'm going to go on the top of my cheeks. Now with this brush, it's not doing what I want it to do. So I'm going in with my finger and I'm going to gently, I didn't put a lot on, so I'm just gonna gently blend it into the tops of my cheeks. Yeah, this Flexitarian is so gorgeous. So I'm gonna go in with this Rimmel Lasting Finish Lip Pencil in the shade Mauve Shimmer and I'm going to place that all over my lips. These Rimmel pencils work so well. All of their Rimmel lip liners are good. So the next thing I want to go into is this little bitty sample that I got at Sephora from YSL and I don't know what the shade is but I'll list it right here because I don't see it on the back but this is the beautiful shade right here. It doesn't go on really pigmented. It goes on like kind of sheer but I really love this. I actually took this out of town with me as well. It comes off 
very light. It's like very moisturizing on the lips. I do want to finish off the eyes. I do want to go on the bottom lash line with both of the shades that I used. I'm going to go in with the Sonia G Pencil Pro. So I'm just adding the light shade first. And then I'm going to go in with the darker shade closer to the lash line. Just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do something with my hair and then I'll be back and we'll get into all the new products. Okay guys, I'm back. I went ahead and set my face with the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Primer Spray. This is something that I've had for a long time. I also have one that's Coconut and Rose. It's the same thing. They're all primer water sprays. Those other two just have a scent to them. This one does not. Let's go ahead and go into the products that I use today and let me give you my first impressions on these products. Let's see. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention is the Found Sealer by Tarte. Like I said, I do like the way that it applied. It looks really, really pretty on the skin. Um, it looks like real fresh. It doesn't look greasy. It doesn't look cakey. But I will say that it is a light to medium foundation. It's not a full coverage foundation. So this is probably a foundation that I would not pick up because I like a little bit more coverage. I don't really feel like it covered up too many of my imperfections, especially those minor imperfections. And it's not buildable. You can't build it up to full coverage. As you guys saw, I literally put on three layers and it still was a very light medium coverage. So yeah, I think this foundation is gonna be good for people who have dry skin or who want that nice natural looking coverage. But I will say that just based on first impression, it doesn't look bad. It looks really nice and natural on the skin. I did use one of the Hypnotic Lights Shimmer Shadows, the liquid ones from Milani. I will say that I've used these before. These are three new shades, so I did want to show those to you today. I think they're even limited edition. So if you can get your hands on these, I would try to do so because they're really affordable, easy to use, they don't go everywhere, and they look really beautiful on the eye. For the Beauty Blender Power Pocket Puff, I really like this, guys. I really felt like it really smoothed out the concealer. It helped it to where it didn't crease. Like normally when I use a brush, I'm having to like dab the powder into my under eyes so it doesn't crease. But this actually helped with less creasing. So I really like this. And I am going to be using this side for touch-ups just to see if it really works for that oiliness that I get on my T-zone. But yeah, I really like the puff. I think it does a great job of setting my under eyes. So for the Huda Beauty Contour Cream, this is a really good cream, guys. It's so creamy and it blended like a dream. I did go in with the e.l.f. brush and I used this brush clean. But what I would recommend is that when you do use this product, because it's like a pot, that you want to use a clean brush with it all the time. You don't want to keep dabbing in with the same brush because after a while your brush gets bacteria on it and it's just going to go right into that product. So what I would recommend is either use a clean finger to actually dab in and then press it on the skin where you want that contour and then go in with your brush and blend it or you can go in with a clean brush like I did today, dab it on underneath those cheekbones and in those areas where you want contouring and blend it out. Yeah, I would recommend it that way because you don't wanna contaminate the product. You want it to be able to last and you don't want your skin to be irritated because it's contaminated. So that's how I would recommend using this. But as far as the product itself, Great product, I love it. I think it's super creamy, super easily blendable, and yeah, I'm gonna be picking this up more often. So for the Venus Excess Palette, this palette is beautiful. It's got great pigmentation for those two shades that I used today. I didn't use the other two shades, but I will soon because they were just as pigmented when I swatched them as the two shades that I used on my eyelids today. So yeah, I really like this palette. I should have opened it a lot sooner. Um, I don't know if they sell these anymore. I know at one point they were on sale at Ulta, so I'm not sure if they still have them in store, but I will list it in the description box and let you guys know if it's still at Ulta or if it's on Lime Crime's website. So for the NYX Fill and Fluff Eyebrow Pencil, I really found that this was easy to use when I put it on this eyebrow. And on this eyebrow, it was a little more difficult. I don't know why. I think maybe, I don't know. I think maybe I just probably was trying to go in there too quickly. 
um, because I was trying to come back on camera for you guys. But I will say that I do like the product. I really feel like it has the pigmentation to it and you don't need to go in with a heavy hand because just lightly going into your brows gives you enough color. And I do think that the brush um, has a lot to do with how the color distributes in your brow because it did grab on to all those little brow hairs and it did smooth that product out over the brow. I don't think my brows look like super fluffy. I think they look good. I think that the product did a good job of filling in my brows and brushing those brows out, but I don't see like a fluffing effect with my brows. But overall, I think that I'm gonna keep this because I do like it. I do like the ease of it when I did put it on. I think I'll just go in a little bit slower when I do this eye because I think I was just rushing or something. I don't know. Um, either way, I still like it. I think it is a good product if you guys wanna try it out. Okay, for the Deluxe Glow Highlighter by Catrice, to me, this is a 100% dupe for that Hourglass Powder Trio. I really feel like this did the exact same job. Um, I honestly like like this one maybe a little bit better because when I do use the Hourglass Trio, it does leave like a little sparkling effect, which I don't mind all the time. But this one, it's just more like a glow from within. Look at that glow on my forehead. It just looks really soft and pretty and yeah, I really like this. And I think for the price, it's even better. It's just a great buffing product for the end. When you're done with all your makeup and you just want like that glow effect all over, this is like the perfect product to use for that. So the last new product that I use is this Rimmel Lasting Finish Lip Liner. I do have other Rimmel lip liners, but I never use this shade. And it's the Mauve Shimmer, and I think it looks really pretty on the lips. It gave enough of like that pinky mauve shade to my lips to prepare it for the lipstick that I use today. So I really, really like these. This is not an actual new product but it is a new shade for me and it was a winner. So I do wanna mention one more product that I used today for the first time on my eyelids and it's the ColourPop Ripple Super Shock Shadow. And I used it in this look today so that you guys could see how it actually would look with other eyeshadows and how I actually applied it when using it. So loved it, so glad that I purchased this. Again, it's the shade Ripple and it just looks so beautiful on the eye and it went perfectly with those shadows from the palette that I used. So yeah, that's it for my first impressions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.